but we are this is perhaps perhaps one of the few socially distanced open air live performances that you will have heard in months <laughs> And where we are, just to remind you if you weren't aware, we're almost at the end of the part of the canal which has already been improved. Uh, and if you go just over that direction, you come to what's called, for some totally unknown reason, the ocean. It's actually a pond, rather overgrown currently, which is the end of this part of the canal. Just beyond that is the railway. Which... And we're the canal consort, six of us, a group of six, <laughs> with Rachel, Val, Hugh and Mike, and Karen on the horn and Mark on the percussion, drums and other things. <laughs> and our sequence for this first event and for the sub subsequent ones, which I hope you'll manage to make as well, is we sing, we hear a story, we sing again, we hear a second story, and we sing you away. to start with I've never done this before I was asked to do it um, so be gentle with me <laughs> um, my name's Dawn um, I've been a member of the canal trust or what they call it now for 48 years um, I was born and brought up in Chalford still there and always knew of the canal and used to walk it with my parents and as time went on, I got very interested in local history. That's what brought me to the canal and railways. Anyway, um, in the late 60s, I met my husband on Stanton Bridge at Bowbridge. Then we used to do, in the mid 70s, we used to do um, helping uh, the pound, uh, clearing the pound at, above Bowbridge for two or three years. Then family commitments came along. We're still members, but about 12 or 14 years ago, I started doing voluntary work in the Stroud uh, Visitor Centre, promoting the canal. Um, then I help, uh, when it's open, with the bookshop at Brimscombe. And recently, in the last three or four years, or two or three years, I've started with Jan Thomas with um, Cotswood Boat Mobility, which I love, uh, which is excellent organisation and helps to keep the channel clear. Anyway, when we heard, or when I heard that we'd got this wonderful bid, a uh, lottery bid, I jumped with joy. Because, as my kids will tell you, they say that the, the Cotswood Canals is not just an interest with me, it's an obsession. Um, to think that we can get, hopefully, from Saw Junction to Brimscombe Port in my lifetime, I think will be a wonderful legacy for our children and grandchildren. Be, be it you're a boater, a walker, cyclist, fisherman, and another passion of mine, which is wildlife. Anyway, I think that's an, all I really want to say, but I am passionately interested in the canal, and I think the future looks very rosy. I'm going to read Betty's because Betty's not here. Oh, I see. So it's me, and I, and and fortunately Betty wrote out word for word what she wanted to say. So you can you can do whatever you like. Is I'll do it first, and then you can do. All it right, fine. Yeah, that's good. Bridge in the middle of the field. All right. One little bridge and then one. And they said they would have had to go. Look at this one. There isn't any um, remote sensing. Oh, I've got, I just wanted okay. to show you this. Hello, David. Hello. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
holidays on canal boats with family and friends, we were delighted to find a canal nearby, even though it was little more than a rubbish-filled ditch with an overgrown towpath. Over the years, we watched as it was gradually restored by teams of enthusiasts. Three problems that were overcome stick in my memory. Standing, looking at many men in orange waterproofs operating diggers and bulldozers to fight their way through the mud to dig out the new canal under the viaduct above Wallbridge near to Waitrose. We were then able, with hundreds of other people, to walk along the canal bed before it was filled with water. What an achievement! So you're standing really on the historic stretch. These five locks, well forget that one for a minute. <laughs> These five locks is where it all began. Now it's worth a walk, just a walk, and to see how progress has been there. And it's through you, volunteers, members, when Heritage Lottery money is awarded, it's awarded on the back of support. What's your support, they say? Oh, we've got 7,000 members. Pardon? We have 7,000 members in the Canal Trust. Well, that's a few brownie points in any case, isn't it? And so it goes forward. You see, Heritage Lottery doesn't give money it invests it because you watch what happens. Prosperity, a waterway restored, businesses open up, 
peep houses there, it all starts to generate money, which gives people money in their pocket to go and buy a lottery ticket to keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> Westfield Lock. That farmland belonged to Mrs. Hersey. And one day, Mrs. Hersey was, 1972 of course, Mrs. Hersey was walking across the fields and she saw a group of men. You know, hard hats, and I don't think they had high visits on in those days, but nevertheless, hard hats. And she walked across to them and said, uh, Hello, what, do you th what are you doing? <coughs> well, they said, Mind out the way, missus, we're just about to blow this bridge. She said, Pardon? <laughs> We are just about to blow up this bridge. She said, you're not. And what did she do? Walked out, climbed up to the bridge, sat on the top with her legs dangling over and said, you blow it and you blow me. And that is how Westfield Bridge was saved. So thank you all for support. Keep going. A bit of rain doesn't put us off, nor does anything else. Keep going. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. And let's Celebrating the uh, winning of the, of the lottery funds to complete the canal down to here from Stroud and Stonehouse. Live, singing and, and dancing. Dancing? It's you that will have to start dancing when we do the appropriate music. We expect you to, yes, it might be the first one you've seen or heard for nine months, maybe. So, hooray. Um, where we are, I think you should know by now where we are, we're at the end of what will be the new canal, the new revived canal. And in front of us you see Karen and Mark on instruments, and Rachel, Val, Hugh and Mike on voice. Um, we're going to do a slightly longer show this time, no. so don't worry, it doesn't go on too long and it might get dark before we finish. No, no, no. Um, um, just to say... Um, well, my name's Rob Bergen, and uh, I'm the operations manager for our trip boats at the western end of the restoration. Uh, you'll probably know the boats, um, excuse me, that's uh, Endeavour and Perseverance, which are currently at Ebley, <coughs> excuse me, and our newest boat, which I'm sure you've just passed on your way in here, Adventure. 
um, sometimes known as the jolly green giant, I've heard, or the, or the green machine. Not necessarily because of the colour, but because she's all electric, equipped to accommodate wheelchairs. Uh, so she's got uh, a huge cabin, so people that have to use wheelchairs to get about. But she will eventually head over towards uh, behind me and uh, make her way up to, up to Strail just really so that we could accommodate those, uh, those good people in wheelchairs. Other than we, we do have to thank, I think, Clive and Jill Field, who did a, a superb job, largely donations and uh, et cetera, and funding from various bodies that paid for the boat. She really is and a credit to, uh, to, to the trust. So uh, thanks for coming. I shan't keep you any longer because I'm frozen and I'm sure <laughs> okay, those folks, of you that I have been following the group called the Stroudwater Navigation Archive Charity, which is a bit of a mouthful, but we are partners of the new project. And although we can look at the physical canal there, going from Framlode all the way up to Stroud, which terminated in a basin, which is interesting as well, you know, that bit by Dugfields, that was all water at one time. So we've got a big project to do to restore this canal. But what is not always known is that the, can, the physical canal actually does have a very extensive archive. And the archive is physically housed at Gloucestershire Archives in the hub there. And up until now, we've had to go into Gloucestershire Archives to do any research that we wanted to do. And the thing that you can do with the archive is to actually research the human stories that actually go to make up the story of this canal. It was built by ordinary people, masons, carpenters, um, blacksmiths, whitesmiths, all sorts of people. And it was used by the Troman on the Severn the Troman, and even, you know, later on, when we had this one, this Gloucester Barclay Canal actually cut across the Stroud Water, then we had some really big ships going all the way up to Gloucester. So in actual fact, the archive actually tells all those myriad little stories, things like the boats that burst through some of the locks, quite by accident, and also people that fell in the water tragically and drowned, people who were um, arrested for various misdemeanours and then the deep fraud that went on during Edwin Haynes' time as the clerk to the company. So even though this beautiful canal was built and financed by, okay, local directors. It was actually the people that built it, that ran it, that used it, that swam in it. All their stories are in the archive. And now, as part of the project, you can discover those stories yourself because we have been able to put a substantial amount of the archive onto a website. So if you're interested, check out stroudwaterhistory.org.uk and see if you can find some stories that nobody else has discovered yet.
jolty 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 Oh, sing to a lie to a sing to a lie. From ocean to brimstone is well on the way. Now boaters and walkers and altars can play. Saw junctions, the next step that money can buy. And we let the doctors so hold on our fire. Dolty doll, dolty doll, dolty doll, dolty doll, dolty doll, dolty doll, dolty doll. Oh, sing to ra la hey to ra, sing to ra la hey.